Greetings. Welcome back, everybody. This is End of the Nexus, the podcast all about Heroes of the Storm. I'm Garrett. He's Kyle. We're back. You're petting a cat. People can't see it. People can't see it. If they're listening on audio, (laughs) definitely can't see it. And if you're watching on video, they can't see it. But I'm going to out you right now. You're petting a cat. I've got a cat on my lap for this record. Yes, Cartho Nassi, the wonderful senior Supreme Cat, is joining us for this episode here. The door got knocked on and he got scared right before record. So here we are. Uh, he sat on many laps over the years. I wish I could turn this into some sort of analogy of like old times, but this lap is oft occupied. However, like old times, today we're going to be talking about Heroes Land events. Holy butts, man. Yeah. Again, breaking, we keep getting breaking esports news yeah. right before the show. And I just want to say, Heroes Hearth. Thank you. What, yeah. which, which, which one are you going for? I was, I was like, do I want to make a joke? I, I literally blue screened. It's been a really long week. I'm sorry. We, uh, <laughs> our AC died, and I've spent uh, the last six hours listening to hammers and my dogs barking at the hammers mm-hmm. um, as, as they rip out all my old AC. So I just blue screened. I was trying to think, do I go with the joke where I make it all about us and say, thank you so much, Heroes Hearth, for waiting until we're recording a show to drop news. Thank you for making sure that you plan all, all of your marketing around when this podcast records because it kind of feels that way and I love it. Um, So I was trying to decide if I wanted to go that route or just say thank you so much for always making news on Thursday because it's great for the show. Exactly. This was an hour ago that they announced the upcoming Wisdom Studio Mall of America Heroes CCL Season 4 Championship LAN. So we we had 30 minutes to, you know, digest it. And, you know, then then we hung out with chat for a bit before we went live. So we've had an hour to think about it (laughs) at least. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 big news, man. It's big news. But before we get to that, uh, how you doing? How's here's the storm for you? Because it sucks for me. Oh my god. <laughs> oh man, I had uh, I had such an amazing night of uh, storm league last night. Like every game was a huge back and forth, core races, constant battles, like just phenomenal. After a real bummer of an NGS ne- uh, evening, we had a sick player, so uh, we did not perform. As per usual. Hmm. Hmm. That's that's a bummer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It is you know, it, it it's it's the realities of doing a team thing. Like when you when you storm league, you get whatever you can get. But uh when you're playing with a team week in and week week out, you know like who's lacking some sleep, who, who might be tired if you're showing up tired, like at all. It all has an effect because you've seen all these players at their the top of their game. So, you know, Mockery let us know that they were not feeling well last night. We called in a sub. And, I mean, granted, I mean, we, I think we did pretty all right, all things considered, having not practiced together in two months with a new lead assassin. It's a, it's a, it's a lot to manage. That's uh, it's not, you know, it's not what you want to... Uh what you're hoping for i don't think you were like man i i hope i hope things change last minute and we have to adjust suddenly no but i i will take this uh you know down a, a little bit of a rabbit hole here because i got a question uh, we got a question in the itn discord this week that was actually great and i, I certainly don't want to be one who just shows up and complains about it ngs so de la soca asked kyle you've shared your experience about organized play in ngs and about your scheduling woes as captain uh, wonderful admin tasks aside, what are some of the more rewarding feel-good parts of being a captain that you've experienced? And seeing people like be on top of their game, seeing it all come together, seeing a great combo, knowing that you worked on that combo and seeing it unleashed upon your enemies. And of course, you know, th- there's a lot of joy in winning. Like, you know, spirits are high, things are jokey. Uh, that's always a really fun aspect to it, winning. When you're losing, it's a, it's a little harder to be as uh chummy in the comms particularly when you're trying to solve puzzles but i'd say for me probably my favorite aspect of it is just finding out stuff in the draft and being exposed to information that i didn't know like this week and i was called out in the itn discord because i was like did did, did everyone know that anduin has an auto attack bacon uh, effect and they're like yeah kyle you you read the show notes on your show. You literally were like, and, and they're like, you talked about this. And I bet you 99%, I probably was like, the homogenization of auto attacks and why do all healers have to auto attack? And I probably went on about something just like that. 
for 10 minutes. Completely just voided my brain. My most played hero this season, Anduin, for the NGS, has a bacon on his trait leap of faith. So, you know, the button where you grab someone, you think that's all it does. It actually has Pursued by Grace. Basic attacks against enemy heroes heal the lowest health allied hero near Anduin for 32. So whenever Anduin auto attacks, he just heals around him randomly. And so those level four auto attack talents, which seem kind of weird and out of place, actually play directly into his trait and they always get value. I vaguely remember that, uh, but it, I, if you're anything like me, man, like ninety uh, percent of what I say on a podcast falls out of my brain once the recording ends. If I thought about it beforehand, like if it was a planned dialogue, I think I have decent retention. That's a good but point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A uh, lot of stuff that kind of comes up in the moment. That's that's hard to hold on to. But otherwise, it's a it's a little leaky around these parts. So, mm. you know, last night we ran an Aureal draft, which was really really fun uh, with a Hanzo in tow. And I hadn't played New Aureal in a long while, and it was really really enjoyable getting to see that and doing the level one the heal does damage around a Kerrigan, like those sort of intricacies where you're being fed energy by Hanzo with the goal of healing Kerrigan. Those don't really happen in Storm League. You usually are fed the person you're going to be saving all the time. And there's not that pass on or these sort of more uh, flowy strategies. I've seen a, a ton of Oriole this week um, in quick match of all places. And I don't know why, but uh, it's um, really hurt my Illidan win rate. <laughs> getting disengaged, getting whipped around. Getting disengaged, but really Crystal Aegis. Just completely mm. just, oh, are you in our back line about to complete a kill? No, you're not. And now uh, the remaining four members of the team are just going to focus the Illidan, who's now attacking a Crystal Aegis. Oh, and by the way, that Aegis is going to explode and F you up. So. I can say, it, was a, it was a bizarre week in Quick Match. Like, tons of just off picks. I, I, not that, you know, the Quick Match is uh, always just, you know, Kael'thas, Valo, ETC. Like, no, nah, but tons of Kael'thasad, Zul'jin, Ariel. Double Abathur game. I've seen so many double Abathur games. Yeah, and uh, unfortunately, none of them were when I was Illidan. That was, that was when I gave up. I was like, nope, there's too many Orioles. I'm done. I'm not playing Illidan right now. This is not in the water. And then uh, never saw an Oriole for a while and just got a bunch of double Abba games while I wasn't playing Illidan. <laughs> It's it's been it's been interesting. There's a uh, like it felt like like the last like two three maybe even four weeks. I kind of knew what I was getting into with Quick Match. Um, and and this this last week. Uh, yeah, I don't. Everyone's playing all kinds of different stuff. The Avatars, the Orioles, feel like a trend. Like those are happening. I'm seeing a lot more Tyrael suddenly. Um, but beyond that, y yeah, you're right. Like we saw a couple of little gins. Uh, uh, there's like a garnishing of junk rats. I think I'm glad it's not every game. Um, like it's all over the place. I don't. I don't. I don't know what happened in the last week. Um, still the, the quality of the play is still garbage. So that's, that's the through line for like a month. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, I, that's always going to be directly tied to any game that has been a while since an update, the update gets people experimenting, gets them playing more tons of people still love. Here's the storm. I think that's very much highlighted by Abathur. There is a shopping experience. You can only have in Here's the storm there. You come to here's the storm to play these really, really unique heroes in these different maps. And you hit it up weekly instead of daily, and the flame just kind of goes down during those times. That's certainly how it feels. I don't, I don't know. I think I've kind of distilled it. This is an oversimplification of what I've been dealing with, but um, it, it feels like in games where I don't play a hero with lane clear, we either don't have it or no one focuses on it. Um, and then we fall horribly behind. And then in games where I bring the lane clear, uh, everyone else just feeds. Mm. <laughs> so I'm, 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 th th there's an oversimplification, but it's what I've been experiencing in my games that I kind of just look at and I'm just like, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know what to do. I, uh, I, I, I guess I, I don't know. Do, do I want to lose one level behind or do I want to lose three levels behind? <laughs> That's kind of where I'm at at the moment. Yeah. Whatever, whatever you'd enjoy that process with, right? It's, it's tough to, I, I enjoy my Nazebos. That's probably my favorite hero to lose on because I get to 
keep having at it to the very end. I got lots of little tricks, ice blocks, and zombie walls. That's a good point. Yeah, get my yeah. own personal play out. Well, we 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 did have, the highlight for me this week is that you and I have finally broken through our personal duo loss streak. Um, we've we've the the. the like a month ago, I think we talked about this and it feels like the last two weeks it's followed me into my solo games too. But, um, Oh boy. Uh, we, we just had a rough go of it. And we finally, all it took Kyle was a double helping of Zool. I played Zool and you played Zool gin. Yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun doing the guillotine on the bone prison, which really didn't happen because man, material tanks really mess with you trying to target anything. Yeah. Cause they just, they just, freaking teleport right yeah <laughs> so and then if you don't bone prison the tyrael they're all over you they, they go into the back line they start smacking on the zul gen and they ignore me on zul entirely but that was a really fun game that's a really fun duo um that i would love to play more of i'm very down if you are in the future i had a good time with that i don't know why we never really thought about the zul zul but it's a good time for me, it's a it's just quick match. Zool is uh, it's better with the guillotine build because you kind of like focus on spell damage and you're not as uh, dependent on the auto attacks. But man, getting auto attacks in quick match, getting 150 is a tall order. It is, it is. I mean, just in general though, like you bring burst to the guillotine, but then you also bring your own sustain to the party. Like it's it's nice, especially in a, yeah. a non draft environment where you might need to fill in a gap. So it's. It's all right. It's all right. Of course, we kept ending up in... We did that a few times, um, and we kept ending up in... Uh, it was the ABBA mirror match more than once and a Zul'jin mirror match more than once with that comp. Yeah. It was very It was very interesting. That's volatile, by the way. My God. It was like this... These two Abathurs just having a mine off. It was like, is that... My, should I... Whose mines are those? Oh. And then... There were so many Zul Jins on field because that was who who was getting copied. It was just all the Zul Jins. There'd be like four Zul Jins at a time during team fights. It was a lot. Messy stuff. There's so many stuff. axes, Kyle. I didn't know who, who whose axes were whose. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I don't want an axe. <laughs> this is how I felt coming out of that. But uh, anyways, uh, I look forward to doing more of that if uh, if you feel like uh zooling with my zool absolutely we got it's a really good combo you know we one of my favorite old combos of ours is butcher uther but sadly it is a very quick match dependent to get arranged so with our orphea anduin and now zool zuljin i bet you both of those work really well in storm league we should we should try try those in a draft kind of kind of set up our twos and see if we can draft late mm. those aren't really heavily contested heroes that'd be interesting I'd be down for that. I'd also be down for thanking our patrons. You want to you just give them a little, little thank you? Yes. A little thank you? Hey, if you're supporting us over at patreon.com slash ITN, thank you so very much. And if you're not, I'm not going to threaten you. It's fine. We, we appreciate it. We understand. <laughs> <laughs> but if you like what we're doing here, you want to support us. We're bringing you Heroes News coverage analytics every week and week out. Check out patreon.com slash ITN and come join our patron-only community of Lovely Heroes of the Storm enthusiasts. And you get that automatically for any level of backing that you choose to sign up for over at patreon.com slash ITN. And again, you can make your own level. Whatever works for you works for us. We really do appreciate the support, everybody. So check it out, patreon.com slash ITN. And we'll be announcing this month's game night very, very soon. Um, most likely targeting the last Thursday of the month, which is actually, I believe, the last day of the month, isn't it? Yeah, 31st. It is. Nice. It is. So yeah, keep an eye out for the signups for our patron bonanza, our monthly game night targeting Thursday, March 31st. So anyways, let's, let's move straight into the breaking news of a uh, CCL round of four through finals are going to be, it's going to be a land event. It's going to be in person in Bloomington, Minnesota at the mall of America at the new wisdom gaming studio. This is awesome. What yeah. a time. What a time to be a Heroes of the Storm fan. We just had a LAN in Miami. We're about to have... We, we already knew we were having one for Masters Clash, right? We knew that they were going to have a LAN for that. And now we're having a LAN for the freaking CCL finals. It's pretty rad. It's Kyle, pretty our, rad. I, I just want to remind you, because you might be confused. It is actually the year 2022 and not 2018. <laughs> yeah. 
It's really something. Uh, they they reconstructed the tricorder desk, uh, the the trio desk. The, it's CCL colored, so it's kind of blue and orange. But they basically remade the studio. And this announcement rolled on Twitter today about an hour ago with Gilly and Dread kind of introducing things alongside Bahamut and um, Justing. Nice. Yeah, yeah it, was, so. it, was, it, was, it was breaking news, but it, I'm stoked as can be, man. The only th- you know, there's, there's one thing I'm very mad about. Mm. Airline prices. <laughs> Oh, I haven't. Is it not super low crazy time anymore? No, it is not because everyone oh, okay. everyone's vaxxed or they don't care and they're getting on planes. Oh, okay. <laughs> I well, is, wasn't aware. It is, this is a run. Oh, my God. The other day I was just like, I, you know, I, can, I got some miles saved up. Let's go. Let's go somewhere. Let's burn those miles. Never mind. Can't afford anything. No matter. I have a crap ton of miles because I haven't flown in two years. But nope. Uh, airline prices are an all time high. Are you looking? I hear you typing. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm taking a look. I was about to say you could drive, and then I remember no, gas. So <laughs> that's a long drive. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm just thinking about gas. Like uh, I enjoy a good long drive. I, I get to go through Montana. Montana's very pretty. Yeah, um, coffee was pretty solid in Montana, actually. So that was nice. <laughs> I'd uh, I could make a you know I could, I could make a trip out of it. I could make a trip out of it. Oh, yeah. Uh, maybe spend a day or two in the mountains before crossing over and heading northwest. So they're saying that this is the round of four that's going to be happening. Players are required, if you make it to that deep in the season, to show up. You're allowed to have two emergency replacement players, substitute players, should you need them. And and that's a great choice, given COVID restrictions in certain countries coming to America in general, if there are EU players, I'm wondering how much of this was like kind of hinted at the players, the continuing teams and being like, hey, you're going to have to make it to America if you're winning. And they're like, oh, I don't know. I don't know if I'll be able to do that. That's that's where my brain went. I was like, oh, I, I bet this had a a pretty large impact on the roster apocalypse we're seeing. Yeah. But still, that, that's a solid that's a solid addendum. They're allowing some emergency substitutes to come on in, uh, verified from the free agent pool. And that's exciting for players, giving them a chance to show off. Because you know, this is something we you know, found out in NGS, of course. Like, it's better to lose than just give. Like, at least there was a chance. I guess you could roll with Murad and Bot if you really had to. But, you know, that's not <laughs> preferable. Yeah. Which I have seen in the NGS before. There was a team that... Simply could not get a hold of their other players, so they rolled with the Muradin bot. It did not go well, by, by the way. <laughs> you think? He, he is the legend. The legend bot Muradin. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me to hear at all. Yeah, it's, it, it, I've had all these thoughts bouncing around my brain because we just found out about this, and I was thinking about, like, this is interesting because we're, I'm assuming the, uh, the private servers that used to be a thing in HGC... So it was a, it was a real land, and you weren't having to worry about internet connection and all that. As far as uh, ping for the game, I'm sure those are out to pasture, or they've been uh, retrofitted as WoW servers or a game they actually need more servers for. Um, Damn. And <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping you wouldn't laugh. We would just move past. Uh, anyway, um, but it, it's still it's still worth mentioning because they're going to be on like on the same network. Right, so the ping is yeah. going to be consistent across, and if there's any connection issues, that'll be a a studio wide connection issue kind of a thing. So it will be, it will be a level playing field when it comes to ping, even if it's not like what we remember from back in HTC. Like that's pretty cool. That is, it is uh, exceptionally groovy. One could say. Now, now I'm curious. I'm heading over to the schedule for the CCL season four, which I. I think it's only on the website and not on Liquipedia yet. So it's going to take a little digging. I'm wondering how much room is in between the round of four and the end of the regular play period, because are these players going to get a little time to maybe come over to America and play locally beforehand, which would be rather exciting. And I, I just, I just love that sort of stuff. The old 
the old StarCraft through lines and storylines that were built when someone went to create a train up and be on the local servers before the big event and all that sort of crazy thing. So it looks like we have a week off for the July 4th weekend. That's before the playoffs. Uh, Bahamut's in chat saying it's like three weeks. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, there's a week off for July 4th, and then we go into playoff ladder July 10th. And then we've got all that time till August 5th for everyone to get their affairs in order and to train up and this last season, the teams were training like crazy for the final event. Ooh, and the crowd getting them all going and getting them drafting weird because they want fan favorites. Yeah. Mmm. Man. What a, what a trip. Kyle, get what in the car. App- bring Flynn. Dress him up like a murloc. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Let's Come on. Come on. It's a, it's a blast from the past, man. It's It's been crazy. You know, we've all been... We've all been thinking about Blizzard a lot recently. You know, there's been there's been wow news. There's been all sorts of move. Uh, uh, by side note, co- completely. But congrats to AZ Jackson for becoming lead. I think class balance designer over on Diablo Four. I believe it's lead, awesome. lead lead class designer uh, on D Four. Yeah. So if if you're a, a I wouldn't say an old Into the Nexus fan, but if you're you know a, an Into the Nexus fan expanding extending back into last year. Uh, and you're thinking to yourself, man, I miss AZ Jackson. Uh, you should probably get hyped for Diablo 4 because he is now in charge of the classes over there. That is really, really cool. Uh, I love the patch style that came out of that philosophy that he brought to the team and and everything that was going on over there. It's just uh, that makes me really excited for Diablo 4. You know, I costly, agree, man. Uh, I thought he did. I, do, I thought he did some really good work, except for Junkrat. <laughs> <laughs> I now it, I do think that we have uh you know I've seen some talents I've actually done a giant rat interview now uh for the Heroes Hearts channel so I have I have some improved opinions there is some in a junk rat's mind some restrictions when it comes to doing that trap build and they do have they perceive there to be counterplay Thanks to the more recent. Uh, yeah, I'm glad that you're 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 adding those measures of things where they are clearly full of shit. Um, <laughs> maybe they just feel bad. Does that make you feel better? The junk rats feel kind of bad and they're aware of it. I mean, they should so, stop playing it then. It'll make so me feel maybe. better when they stop playing that horrible hero. And they're experiencing guilt every time they do it to you. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad that they perceive limitations on their hero with no <laughs> counterplay. That's very nice. It makes me feel so much better that you perceive limitations. Greatest enemy is yourself. <laughs> Yeah, last last game night, man. I had I had to pick the junk rat in that uh, A Ram. I felt horrible. There was a, there was a mirror match though in that A Ram. We had another junk rat. I was the bigger bastard, as it would turn out. Yeah, you built right. Yeah, it was a good build. You can... I, I mean, I listened to you because I don't play him. <laughs> I was like, what do I do? What do I do on this hero? I hate. <laughs> it's A Ram. But you can get it. You can get it. Win in Rome, Kyle. Win in Rome. Play play a monster. Be a monster. Everyone should check out that video over at youtube.com slash heroes hearth. Good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> this is just awesome. I, I can't believe how many we're coming like multiple lands back to back for Heroes of the Storm. It's just great news. It's good stuff. I like this community. Even junk rat players. That's right. I said it. <laughs> Even junk rat players. So well, bring on August, I guess. Not Again, yet. I'll make the okay. I'll, I'll make the trip. I'll make the trip if you make the trip, Kyle. <laughs> it sounds good, man. Okay, I got the I got the seats. I got I, I got the comfy seats on that car I, I purchased. I, I got the comfy seats. We can do it. I believe in me. Uh all right. Well, Kyle, it's uh, it's it's been a it's been more more than a full month now since our last balance change, and you wanted to take a look and see where things have settled. I thought there was an interesting little post here over on Team Liquid talking about the balance patch. Pretty well after the fact, this is written by Konarov. Uh, yeah, the real name's down at the bottom. Samuel Fuentes wrote this. Okay, there we go. Uh, also edited it. Um, so 
go check it out. We'll have a link in the show notes for you. But uh, yeah, Samuel breaks down uh, a lot of what's going on. Kind of just basically looks at where things have settled, uh, which is nice because this is what we like to do on the show anyway. <laughs> when we've exactly. had some time with a patch and kind of looking at uh, different roles and seeing who got nerfed, who got buffed, who got reworked, and what effect it had, if any. And and it, there were, there, it, I mean, now here we are a month and a half later, and, and it did have an effect pretty much across the board, and most of it was in the direction you would expect. A lot of the nerfed heroes went down a little, a lot of the buffed heroes went up a little, and a lot of the reworked heroes are probius, so it's weird, and, it, you know, it's probius. Kind of fell off there. Haven't really seen a lot of the probe. Not a lot of people experimenting with that anymore. Tracer did feel it. I'm, I'm, I've am I'm, been seeing more Genji. Genji in my circles is a more fun Zeratul. I don't know if that's necessarily true. It, Zeratul is universally more useful because he has lane clear and he can cover a double soak and all sorts of stuff like that. But Zeratul's are bored of playing Zeratul and therefore want to play the slightly improved Genji. So Genji is an interesting one. Um, I mean, it, it, his here his win rate is wicked low, but it it has been for a long time. So there's not really much news there. But he's an interesting one to look at for popularity because uh, he's around like seven and a half percent, which is lower than middle of the pack. And I'm noticing a lot of the heroes that were changed up are falling around a similar popularity. So like you mentioned Tracer, who was nerfed and her, her, she was more popular and her popularity is around uh, the same as Genji now, as far as picks and bans in Storm Lake. So Genji has kind of become my, my touch point for middling popularity. <laughs> Like I've, I found myself while taking a look at this when you're like, oh, I like this article on Team Liquid. I want to you know take a look at the meta. It's been about a month and a half. You know, I started looking and I was just like, wow, so many of these heroes in terms of like seeing them in games, they're falling around Genji. And, and it's just this kind of this middling popularity where you'll pro you'll see them enough to notice, but they're not going to be overabundant and they're most likely not going to be banned. And that's Tracer. That's Genji. It, Arthas is more popular than Genji and Tracer in draft. I believe it. I don't. Yeah. That surprises me. Arthas is a, uh, not popular as we're kind of talking about here, but he is a common pickup in the middle low leagues as a tank. Middle low leagues love their Muradins and their more aggressive kind of tank picks. Mm. You okay. kind of feel like you're doing something. That, that, that's some, that's uh, slightly insulting. I didn't mean it that way, but they, they, there's a, <laughs> They want to be smacking, and so they choose a tank that feels like you're assassinating or you're a little more aggressive. Um, also, you know, Diablo and all those sort of things take a lot of practice and game knowledge. Mm. Yeah, that's 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 true. So, yeah, do you think, before we move on from Tracer, do you think she's just become more of a situational pick? Because it's kind of how it feels. It's like with popularity down and win rate down... Uh, a notable amount, um, almost almost down three percent, but still above that that fifty percent mark, which is what we 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 look at when when we're you and I are looking at stats. Um, I don't know. I always thought of her as a popular hero, and she just really isn't anymore. So I, I think she's been kind of moved into the situational pick. I think there is a huge outlier when it comes to Tracer. Granted, you know, hanging out with Mockery again, like he loves the hero he can do unnatural things upon it and smurfs are created in the name of tracer to play tracer and to circumvent getting your main hero banned which finds you great joy and when you're looking at the matrix like they're capable of doing at blizzard i have no doubt that some of these tracer probius and genji changes are all about targeting that player type and by nature of those sort of you know balance changes uh cassie feels really good right now i mean i don't mean to instantly bore and uh eject my entire stream audience but uh because <laughs> 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 uh, i there that was that bender of like four months where i got to masters playing nothing but cassia but yeah it's by nature of like other heroes going down 
heroes that have been untouched in a long time are going up and Cassie is one of them. That was, and I think that, thank you for reminding me. That's the other trend I noticed this week. I saw a lot of Cassia and uh, uh, the blind really effed up my Illidan play. Mm. The, and, 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 and those are the games of the Oriole as well. So I was having a properly bad time. But I think they're looking at like the numbers and they see these outliers of certain accounts playing so much Tracer that that needs to be controlled so that it's not ruining other games. In some ways, it's, it's, it might be even Smurf protection through balance. Mm. And I'm curious, I'm curious as to why Junkrat doesn't receive that. Or maybe he has like we're thinking, oh, Junkrat's so annoying. Oh, I, I hate fighting Junkrat. Like he could be he could be mained out there. To the earlier Zeratul note, I wonder what stops people from maining Zeratul in that way, because he can absolutely smurf on people, and he's extremely powerful. But I've never seen, like, a Zeratul barcode. Every time someone plays Zeratul, it's like, oh, if I must be burdened with these great skills, these hands can only cleave, and they just, they, they, they hate it. I... I, I feel that way about Falstad, I guess, because mechanically or thematically, I'm not interested, but he is really, really solid. I never get excited about playing him. There's just something about his kit that just does nothing, nothing for me. In the, what is it? What it was top, the old top of your guys? They call it the fizz. Like they, they want a car to give you the fizz. Falstad doesn't give me the fizz. The fizz? There's no fizz. It's like that X factor. Like that's just that feeling. Oh, where like it excites you. Yeah, yeah. yeah Falstad just mm. the only thing that uh, excites me on Falstad is when other people bring stunts to the party, and then I'm like, cool, I can just be a jerk. That's when I get excited. He's he's paper, you know. It's that it's that old riding the line. But if I'm gonna ride the line, I want the more snappy execution powers of Vala. I'm I'm there with you, man. Uh, at the same time, I get I I can understand people who are really passionate about Falstad. Like I I see the potential in this kit. I just it doesn't click for me. Um, it feels I don't know. Like I'm trying to spin plates <laughs> the whole time I'm trying to play Falstad, which I don't know why it doesn't feel that way with Vala. I think you know what it is. It's stutter stepping. I just love stutter stepping. That's all it all comes down to. And Vala has uh, probably the most satisfying stutter step in the game. Absolutely. And some of that's just animation that her crossbows or guns, I, I play in the cowboy skin, uh, it preps the next hand in the air. So you go cuckoo with right and then your next hand starts coming down. And when you turn around, you're cuckooing with the left. And there's this, this nice little animation to it that really gives you this stutter stepping, you know, dual wheeled halo vibe. Yeah. Yeah. New halo. You can't, you can't dual wield. Drives me nuts. But I, Zuljin's dual wielding, and I hate his stutter step. It's awful. Well, it's difficult because you you can your attack can speed up, right? Yeah, your your speed can be faster than you can stutter step, and you're just bigger. Like you you have a larger model, so you just don't feel like you go as far with each stutter step. You don't weasel out of the way of that frost bolt or whatever's flying at you. Yeah, I guess it's an ice lance, right? Ice lance. Yeah, Jaina. Ice yeah. lance. Yeah. Well, let's um let's no. take a look at uh, <laughs> I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> let's take a look at tanks and bruisers. Um, after talking about assassins, because uh, you mentioned Diablo, who got some buffs as well as etc, and they are up a little bit. Um, but it's also like worth mentioning that like they've both been low for a while, so they're both kind of in that forty eight ish percent win rate territory. Um. Like Diablo closer to 47, but I mean, we're, we're kind of splitting hairs. I think in this whole territory, there's like a lot of heroes fall in this range. You have your, your Dahakas, your Hanzos, your Yorels. And by, I mean, yours, I mean, Kyle's Yorel. Cause I think he's like the only person I ever see play Yorel. Like maybe once a we're month. We're few and far between. Much. Yeah. You're a, you're a dedicated bunch. You're a dedicated, so, oh my God, 2% popularity. I haven't looked at her popularity in a while. So they're, they're both Diablo up. makes perfect sense. Does he? I, I have more questions about Diablo, but but finish that thought. Diablo is like shepherd's pie or chili or making your own broth. 
You're just going to use whatever the hell's available for you because you love it. Uh, I was wondering where you're going with that. I'm like, is it, okay, uh, the, the shivers fine chili. All right. I'm full. It sticks to my ribs. And then you mentioned broth. I'm like, okay. Anyway. Yeah, no, just whatever you got lying around. You know, if you're making like you're using the bag of frozen organic for some to you know put vegetables in your spaghetti sauce, like whatever you can do to make your favorite meal, you're going to do it with Diablo. And so Diablos are very tenacious. They're crafty. They just want to play Diablo. So anytime you balance one part of their kit, particularly one particular build, they're just going to go, ah, oh, well, and move over to the next build that's currently functional. And that's what happened with Sacrificial Soul. This is the one where you do the charges and get your souls back. So it's made this uber aggressive Diablo in a lot of games. Now, the low leagues still love their life leech, which is fair because blinds miss, blinds don't get drafted. Diablo just keeps living and he lives so long that people gravitate towards the fight that's happening. And, you know, the longer you live in the low leagues, the more you're just going to call action. Enough pings will <laughs> transpond that people will arrive on the scene to hopefully win the battle. But Sacrifice of Soul is the stunning hero with Shadow Charge grants 10 souls and 20 armor. While at 100 souls, this increases 40 armor. So you may be playing with Diablos who just like charge, not in range of anybody right now. And you're like, what is your problem? We're not in range of that. Well, they have 40 armor. So you will be eventually in range of it is the kind of, the kind of their plan. And if I'm more aggressive than the enemy team, my team should pick up on it. And hey, we all just might win based on me just charging 24-7. Okay, interesting. Because, like, his win rate's not crazy. Like, it's not in the realm of anything I would be concerned about. And yet, he's a top five most banned hero. His popularity is off the roof. Uh, or, or or out the roof. Um and I and I just don't get it. And I was I was messing around with filters earlier today on hot slogs because I was like, well, maybe it's a league thing. Maybe Diablo's a higher end or just it's not. The bronze through masters are banning the crap out of Diablo. <laughs> well, our initial bans are Johanna and Rhaegar still. Yep. Then usually a Stukov thrown in, and then yep. almost always it's a snipe or someone from the previous game. Well, I'm I'm, I'm thinking somebody. about like all leagues too, though. Like, and, and yeah. you're not getting sniped in in bronze or gold, I don't think. Well, that's what I'm saying. Previous game, you you get on that game and you're like, oh no, you know, big big booty over there was previously a Lunara, and they did amazing. I'm gonna ban Lunara. Oh, okay, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, but but like Brightwing is is number three most banned hero right now on Hot Slugs. I believe that. Yeah, Brightwing global healing. We're banning healers anyway. Like. With with those two healers banned, usually your third ban, you're looking at the enemy team and you go, we're going to ban a tank or we're going to ban a healer, depending mm -hmm. on what's been picked. And I think Diablo is extremely common because it's very easy to make a world where that's good, whether you have that Tyrande or an Anduin, some sort of follow-up CC, Malfurion, like across all these supports. If they already have a support, you go, hmm, does it have any CC on it? Diablo is probably pretty good. Let's mm -hmm. not deal with that. Gotcha. Okay, I don't know. I just uh, it, something about a Diablo did not really strike in fear into my heart at the moment. In the high leagues, you just see a lot of Diablo because it's an aggressive pick, mm -hmm. and every both teams are trying to out aggressive one another. And there is a, a Murden is good. He's very valuable. It's something we're noting in our own NGS team right now. It's really hard to tell in this current meta if we're all gonna dive or what the plan is there usually you have the bruiser and the tank dive and then the back line fends for itself and whoever fends best wins <laughs> gotcha murden has a has a trend of getting himself absolutely destroyed in that diving the three back line scenario i can see that Whereas Diablo has 40 armor, perhaps has the regen, didn't go as deep, honestly. Yeah, yeah, because he's his he doesn't like eject himself so far into the back. His 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 dash is is pretty modest, right? So uh, like it, when Diablo stays with the team, I guess I guess like in a pickup environment, he does kind of naturally apply 
to like shot calling, I think a little more effortlessly than a Muradin. Like if a Muradin gets too excited and the team's not ready, the Muradin's left to die. If Diablo surprises his teammates with a sudden engage, the teammates probably aren't that far away. They can actually, they actually have a, 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 a beat to react. Well, it's limited by the terrain that the rest of the players are thinking about too. Like Muradin could just go over a wall. And leave everybody completely alone. That's that's we, also good, but that's on the Muradin at that point. Yeah, it is action packed, and you know I, I I respect it, particularly when you get that bronze beard's rage on, and you're just burning and healing yourself. It's really fun. But Diablo, and, you know, I'm, and I'm also selling this Diablo narrative. I love playing the hero. I I would enjoy playing it more. Uh, when it comes to etc, I assume that pick rate has gone down. It just doesn't feel like a good environment for ETC, but I mean, the the win rates are similar. ETC is a little bit higher than Diablo, but, but Diablo is closing in on double the games played as ETC. Their, their popularity. Let's see. Diablo's at a 43% and ETC is at a 17%. So there it is right there. ETC Mm -hmm. not getting picked, not getting banned. Diablo getting picked and getting banned. His, his banned and picked is almost 50, 50 Uh, on hot slugs right now. Current, Current patch, we got over 9,000 games banned and over 9,000 games played. What can they do to make ETC more appealing that's not just broken? That's he's been got the, such an amazing kid. That's been the problem. He, yeah. When he's been a go-to meta hero in all leagues in the past, his damage has been overtuned. Yeah, or there was the... Um, Ma b- 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 amp, the amp. What was the amp called? Oh, I don't remember, but I was playing him during that. You're right. No, yeah, we were all doing it. It was it was good times. It was fun just getting those resets on your on your heroic all the time. That would be the encore. Encore. Okay, thank you. Reducing ability cooldowns, heroic ability cooldowns by five percent. Yeah, yeah. Because I I loved old old like uh auto attack etc man oh, just yeah. like that was so much f- it was a fun tank to play because he has a, you know what etc is a good has a decent stutter step yeah it is not bad axe wings it is predictable he has a good move speed good animation set you can really find a rhythm with etc uh but yeah it's it just they seem to be afraid of it. I don't know. Like, yeah, Crush says better armor duration. That would help. I, like, I feel like they haven't pushed him far enough in the survivability category as they've as they've just worked damage out of him. Hmm. Again, I, I, I tend to come at this from like an average player perspective, though. So it's just like the tank either either needs good survivability or good damage. I don't think ETC has either. His damage isn't great, and his survivability is among the worst. I'd be interested if we could maybe give it a stitches treatment, whether through talents or maybe just bacon. Could guitar solo give shielding if it's at full health? Maybe. You think of permanent or timed? Timed. Time okay. that out, yeah. But I don't know. Permanent wouldn't be bad. It's just that often you want to start doing guitar solo for other reasons, whether it's like lane clear for echo pedal or speed metal. So certainly don't allow him not to cast it. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. I, 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 I'm, ETC has stumped me. Well, it's, it's such a, it's a puzzle because he's just destroyed and over drafted against in the high leagues, but in the low leagues, he can just, be all the CC a team needs. And I think Anubarak has interestingly enough found that balance of bringing all the CC a team needs and having the lack of survivability for it. And that fantasy, because of the huge burrow charge, works. Maybe we lean into it, right? Like, I mean, Kael'thas has basically it, it, it inhabited this extreme danger and reputation an auto ban in the lower leagues for his entire existence. doesn't really matter what they do to him. Kael'thas gets banned in lower leagues. Uh, maybe just like lean into that for ETC. Just like, like let him be scarier at, at a more average skill level. I don't know. Be weird. It'd be interesting to, to see them attempt to design 
that on, on purpose, or at least to where it's obvious to us that it's on purpose, right? Because usually I feel like Kael'thas, they've been trying and trying and trying to dial that back and get Kael'thas to this point where he's of like relatively equal power level to, to, you know, regardless of, of, of skill, but but it's just never really happened. I don't I don't think they meant for, for KT to be this, this auto ban for bronze and silver. I think the Butcher is a really good example of stopping the low league from running away with it. You basically have to understand macro and and playing safe, which the low leagues would struggle with. So getting your meat is this dangerous proposition and becoming the more powerful butcher. And we often talk about, and many people have wanted, getting meat on Merc camps. But giving a player making mistakes the ability to recover meat, I think that's a purposeful choice. They They want the butcher to have that macro knowledge limitation to stop him from just running away with it. Butcher would probably become a main of mine. If you could get me off mercenaries. No, me. Yeah. yeah I too. love He's... the butcher. I never play the butcher. <laughs> Cause it's, it's just, it's just too risky and he, he has good lane clear, but I can't, I can't go do a, a camp. He's good at taking camps, but sorry. Questing. Can't well, right and, now. And, Quick match, the chance of a two-lane map is just high. That is scary. extremely high. Yeah, it's painful. It's painful, but yeah. Poor ETC. I would love to play ETC again. I really like him. I really like his, his kit. I don't know. I, I, he, I, 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 need, I, need, I think he needs base level power at this point. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bored with seeing his talents get, get messed with and it not really having an impact. We're also in a current support environment of Stukov, Brightwing, Anduin, and then Rhaegar is banned in most cases. So yep. we're not running Uthers, we're not running cleanses, and without that cleanse, ETC is just not going to fly. That's what, yeah, yeah, yeah. And do you, do you want to depend on cleanses? Because again, we just had this conversation of like, you don't lean into it. Make ETC good for, for, for you know, gold and below. I don't want to depend on cleanse in those situations. Here's the storm, you know. That I, I lean towards yes. I lean <laughs> towards that. Immediately, my brain goes to hammer, and hammer having unstoppable me to is, is, is an affront to the whole theory of here's the storm. I don't think hammer should have an unstoppable. There is a reliance on each other that this game brings that works with the shared XP, and I think the cleanse to etc balance is right on. Mm. Okay. I'm going to keep pushing. Just give, give ETC power somehow for love of God. <laughs> At this point, I don't care how. Um, as far as healers, uh, we've been talking about them all this whole segment long. We keep mentioning Regar and Stukov, both of which reserved, received um, nerfs of some sort in, in, in the, the most recent patch. And they, they both saw a little uh, downward trajectory. Just a little, though, at least for Stukov. Stukov barely moved, kind of more or less stayed where he is. Uh, Rhaegar saw a massive downward movement, but he was above 60% before. So he has settled in at um, still almost 60% win rate. He's at 58% still. Rhaegar is still doing great if you get him. Because currently, uh, he's getting banned way more often than he's getting picked. <laughs> I think... I think it's interesting that we often draft Rhaegar for his power, but not necessarily for what he brings. And that's going to make him intensely hard to balance. Now, I did hear an interesting little tidbit this last week in NGS. And uh, this was from Cavalier Guest and my chat. I believe it was uh, Shredded Wind brought it up. Tidal Wave. At 13 is becoming the go-to, actually. This is the level 13 talent where you reduce chain heals cooldown by one second for each hero it healed and reduce its mana cost from 60 to 40. This is because people are starting to target the totem. So that totem build is a pivot that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. So at Wellspring needs the totem to live a really long time. And if people are targeting 
the totem, particularly when it's putting out chain heals, well, then there's no point in taking Wellspring. So you sort of spend the early game still doing a totem build and gauging if the enemy's actually dealing with your totem. And then as the late game comes on, you make this choice of 13, whether or not you're going to fully commit to it. But what if they're doing a galaxy brain strategy, Kyle, and they're purposely not targeting my totem so that at 13, I go Wellspring, and then they're like, joke's on you. We've been letting you get insane value for 12 levels. True. You've fallen into our trap. Usually splash damage will end up taking it out, you know, exploding in the area or, you know, random auto attacks are kind of informing you because there's just so much raw damage over there. But you're absolutely right. That switcher would be amazing and hilarious should it happen. I know I've been targeting totems a lot as the support player because, you know, my auto attacks, well, they should be hitting heroes now that I know about Anduin. But, I, I, but, I, I want to talk to our chat for a minute because Grimly, as much as you're, ma- I, as much as you're making me laugh, says a healer taking healing talent, the, the world we live in, Wellspring was a healing talent. It is. It, it, it would put out chain heals at 35% of the normal value. It could really do a lot for Rhaegar, who has some throughput uh, issues. Now, the win rate is about pretty close to even on that tidal wave wellspring business. And where... So my, my, my kind of exploratory thought here is that Anduin right now is taking his 13 and his 16 to augment the reason you take Anduin. The reason you want Anduin over everything else in the game is for Leap of Faith. That's the reason you pick him. You want to pick people up. You want to move them and give them that cleanse as they fly through the air and reposition them. So everybody wants to pick Enchanted Boots of Lion Speed and Glyph of Faith. So you get two charges. Glyph of Faith used to do a be a level 220 talent. So what I'm curious about is can we design around that? I, I think that's healthy. It's not going to be healthy for Anduin's you know, pick rate as we get deeper into that philosophy taking off. I mean, right now in Hot Slogs, we're seeing Glyph of Faith be picked at 42% of the time, and the Enchanted Boots Lion Speed is still competing with Speed of the Pious. But if this sort of thought thought philosophy takes off on Anduin, then we're going to see it all just go into his trait there. It's the reason you took him. Why would you not make the reason you take him better? But Stew Cop, we don't... With Low Blow, we had the silence, but you don't really take Stukov for... You do take him for the silence? What do you take Rhaegar for? Do you you take him because the totem's powerful? No, you make the totem powerful. Do you take him because you need a cleanse hero? Not really. I mean, I think you do take him because the totem is powerful, but if we're, if we're defending level 16, or sorry, level 13, you don't take him because the totem heals, eventually heals. The, The totem, the slow, is good out the gate. From the beginning of the game. It is a nice utility piece. And they made his healing good. Like really good. His healing used to suck. He's 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 become the Johanna of, of healers. And then like old Ju- Johanna. Not new Johanna. Even though new Johanna is still kind of. You've always said Johanna was like the kitchen sink tank. It's just She just brought a little bit of everything. And Bregar does too. But from a healing standpoint. Yeah. Really good at healing, really good at controlling the battlefield, has decent damage, and can add damage on top of that to players that you want damage added on top of. So I guess what I'm saying is, Stukov became this silence machine. He brings so much to the table. I really like, I, I burden myself even saying that like Stukov's taken for silence, but it's true. That's what you think of when you think of combos and zombie walls, Leorix, anything else, you want to use the silence. So let's let's think of it like that. Uh, and when you take for this grab, Lily, I think, is the premier cleanse hero next to Uther. And Uther, you take as this off tank and CC. So what what aspect are you going to pick? Blizzard, which which aspect, you know, heroes, designers, like, which which one? Do you want him to be a cleanse healer? Do you want to be the totem healer? Or do you want to be the group healer? The chain, the chain boy. Like, what, which one are we going to really lean into here? And can we then take that energy, bake it in, and then create talents that are interesting. Mm. Not that they're uninteresting talents. They're really fun talents, but kind of the vibe I'm thinking. Are, are, are you, are you, uh, I feel like you're leaning, maybe you're not, but I'm going to put words in your mouth for a second. I think you're, I think you are leaning towards get rid of his cleanse. That's what I'm kind of feeling. Like, why does he have it? I think. 
Because to me, I look at him and like, to me, the core of Rhaegar is group healing and battlefield manipulation through Totem. It could just be subtle manipulation, mind manipulation. You know, they, they want to inch us towards a cleanless, cleanseless Rhaegar, so they made purge, and then they're gonna take it away. I don't think I don't think it's nefarious, but I think that's genius. It that sort of stuff does work well, frankly. Like you know, I oh, uh, we're gonna take a break. I'll see you in two weeks. I you know we're breaking up. Like it's, 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 <laughs> that sort of thing happens. Like oh, well, the ice cream machines don't work. Never mind, we don't serve ice cream anymore. You prepped everybody for this inevitability, and maybe purge going the way of Lunara removal on allies, but still being this enemy slow instead of a cleanse could allow Rhaegar to have this fun kit that we're enjoying without completely getting rid of the reason you take him. And I don't think you take him as a cleanse. I I, I may be just completely off base here. There might be Rhaegars out there that are like, he is a cleanse hero. You're playing it wrong. I'm playing wrong right now in that case. I mean, his pure healing throughput is just also good. Uh, and, right. And, and like, I, I don't know. Like, I would love if, if we could get, uh, like a comment from the team on like what what does kind of like what does the global healing numbers look like on all heroes because like we don't have access to that hot Slugs doesn't track that I, I don't know where to begin to look to see like what overall healing done numbers are but i at the moment i feel like Rhaegar is trending above the average healer and and how much of that is playing a role in his still quite high win rate uh, because if that's the case it's like well I think it feels good. Like I still win games against Rhaegar. I like his throughput. I think it feels good. It feels impactful as a healer. What happens if we start br bringing up the other healers to get into that range? But I don't know how bad it actually is. If it's just anecdotal, if it feels like to me, Rhaegar is healing more than your average healer. And then there's also like the skill, like how much work, do, how much should a healer have to work to do how much healing and how much of that is actually factored into the overall power pie of any given healer. Cause I mean, look at Stukov, how much we're talking about Stukov. Stukov actually actually work to get good healing numbers. And also some of it is dependent on for the love of God, please, please team. Could you spread the spores, please? Um, so like some of that is left up to chance. Like Stukov has to work harder than Rhaegar to get the same type of group healing numbers. So I don't know. That's the kind of thing. I would love, I would love to hear from the team on like, what is that? What is the landscape of raw healing numbers look like? And are they happy with it? And then you got Malfurion, who is up, but nobody. I, really Malfurion feels them. like that kid. Like, I'm just happy to be here. Yeah. Like, he's just, he, Malfurion's feeling plucky right now. Like, I don't think anyone is, <laughs> what's his popularity? 16%. It's okay. We've talked about man. lower popular heroes today. He's double the, the Genjis of the game. He's right around, uh, he's he's more popular than Sylvanas. You love Sylvanas. I love Sylvanas. A lot of people love oh, Sylvanas. Oh, wow. Yeah, maybe not in World of Warcraft right now. I think we're all a little dumb with Sylvanas, but Malfurion sees more but, play, more bands than Sylvanas. Here, there's this wonderful game you may have heard of called Here's the Storm, where Greymane's great, Anduin's great, Sylvanas is great. Sounds like the opposite like, of World of Warcraft. Thrall is great. Like <laughs> we, Jaina's happy. Like we, there's so there's so many great reasons. Like here's the storm. Happy. <laughs> oh Christ, that's good, man. That's good. Um, yeah, yeah. So Mal Malfurion, he's. I think Malfurion is where he should be, and Malfurion is is average popularity, average win rate, average healer. I think that's okay for Malfurion. Because I, I, because I think if you're really good at him, I think you can make him sing. But I think if you're like just okay with him, he's going to be a just okay healer, and that's that's fine. I think Malfurion's a, I, I would I I think he's a good healer to point newer or returning players at. It's like yeah, heal over time. You're going to feel good. no no. I'm just saying. I think like starter kit, like it's fine. You don't need to think about it too hard. But there's so much ma potential mastery there. Oh okay, you know. Yeah. Okay. Get down on my level, Kyle. Come I know. down yeah, out yeah, of your yeah, NGS. Yeah. Oh, no, I, oh my! I play Junkrat every game, but I think there's perceived barricades <laughs> to his perform. I don't give a shit. Okay. I don't care about what you and the twenty other best players in the world 
think. That is, you know, that's fair. You put a heal over time, they can go wherever they want. Like, if you hit your moon fires, it doesn't matter. No, it's you're absolutely fine. fair. To, I think it's a perfectly to fine healer to put that. a new player on. Yeah. But there's, like, so much potential mastery there. Like, there really is. Like, I I think it's a cool heal, healer to, to put to put developing Heroes of the Storm players on. I really do. So, yeah. You come to HOTS, you want some HOTS. Let's go. Get on Malfurion. Hot and HOTS. <laughs> Get your HOTS. You do have HOTS in your HOTS game, right? Meanwhile, White Mane is 3.5% popularity. She's going to live there for the rest of her existence. I, I don't know how you change that with her current mana layout. White Mane is like a, a model steam train enthusiasts. Which I very much understand, man. I, 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 think, it, I think it's cool as hell, and I have no interest in learning it. Dude, what we both love Roller Coaster Tycoon. Tell, oh, go yeah. back in time 30 years and tell me you wouldn't be a model train enthusiast without the aid of a computer. Oh, we'd I, both be I, sitting I, in our overalls choo chewing downstairs. Dude, I'll go get one right now, but I would do an electric <laughs> set. I ain't doing steam. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, no, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not boiling water and putting it in the little top. Yeah, no, I, I'm uninterested, absolutely yeah, okay. uninterested. I, I, I didn't know we were di differentiating the types of model trains we were playing with. Oh yeah, no, I was trying to think of like a like an already obscure thing, but making it complicated. Okay, yes, yeah, yes. I personally think White Mane is uh, charming. I love the attitude she brings. I would love for the mana to just be turned into what everybody else has, and. That is a lot of what makes the hero unique. Perhaps, you know, the the joy of playing something unapproachable. I enjoy my hipster vibe too, but. I I kind of like it there because it, it makes when White Mane shows up exciting. Um, when, when she's on my team, I get excited like, oh, you're, 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 you're some like crazy specialist out of, out of hell. Um, and when I, when I see a White Mane on the opposing team, I get scared. I'm afraid of White Mane. Like, there is a dread that seeps through me when I see White Man on the opposing roster. If only we felt the same way about Alex Straza. Yeah, dude, man, that Alex Straza we had in the game yesterday, I feel so bad for her. She was working her ass off. Oh, yeah, working so hard. And it just wasn't enough. It was one of the best Alex Strazas I've seen in a while, and it just didn't get us there. Was that the Kel'Thuzad game? On the opposing team? I think it was. I believe so, yeah. Kelthazad yeah, was that, just that, like, yeah, I know where you're going to stand, and I'm going to punish you for it. Yeah, it's an issue. Yeah, man. Man. Yeah, we left that game, everybody. I had like, I was like, Kyle, are you ready for my salt? And he's like, oh, God, I'm bracing. And I was just like, doesn't matter how good of an Alex Strauss you are when your hero, hero isn't good to begin with. Mm. That's how I feel about Alex Strauss. She's, a, uh, she's one of the best healers in the game, like 25% of the game when she's in dragon form. The rest of the time, man, it's just rough. It's like trying to get healed by an avatar. Want that? I want that circle detonation. I want bigger circles. Like they're, I think Alex Strauss is an amazing MMO healer for when we're all stacking on boss. But here's the storm that that'd be dangerous. Ah, uh, yeah, man. I've been thinking about that. You the, 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 like being able to pop your your ground heal on command more and more. And I'm thinking like, but let's do it. They can do it. Let's do. Let's just do it. And maybe, got, I just got that ability in Final Fantasy where I can pop my heel on the ground. Oh, oh, I didn't know that. I'm excited about that. But I'll, like, like think about it. And if they need to tune it, like maybe have it do like half healing if you pop it early. But if it completes, it does a big burst, right? Like if they're worried it's going to be too impactful. Like I don't know. Right now in modern Heroes of the Storm, if it, 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 I don't think anyone can make an argument for oh, I don't want group healing to be too impactful because Rhaegar is sitting at almost a sixty percent win rate. What if instead? It didn't increase in power, it just increased in size. So you say, you need to heal right now, tiny circle, right on you, and then I'll pop it. Or you can place it and be like, in the next five seconds, I'm assuming people will need heals on Infernal Shrines. Uh, gravitate towards this general area, which is... Let's go nuts. Two times, two times the size. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I think I like the, it's a, it's a standard size, but if you could detonate your heal, heal earlier, it's a smaller heal, but it still has the wind up like the telegraph wind up for a big, big one. It's probably better. Yeah. It's cause and then it kind of puts the ball in the opponent's corner. Like, 
like or on their on their side of the court where it's like, hey, if you don't want these big heels rolling out, you need to take advantage of this telegraphed heel and force the Oxstrasa to pop heels early, which is already happening. But now, like, let's give her an out. What if we just baked in that quest about her dispensing orbs and made her the premier orb hero? It wouldn't be as fun. I think there's a you you add a, a, a like a a skill potential to being able to manipulate when your ground heel goes off that doesn't currently exist for Alex Straza. Well, I'm just talking about a, there's a there's a talent build that I think a lot of Alex Straza's enjoy where after you do something something <laughs> <laughs> you, you do a thing enough times okay. So level one, circle of life. Quest, collect regeneration orbs. Reward, after collecting 10 regeneration orbs, abundance heals for an additional 5% max health. Reward, after collecting 15 regeneration orbs, abundance heal burst creates a regeneration globe. I stand by what I said. I don't think that's as, I don't, to me, that's not as cool. It'd be fun to put out orbs, though. Yeah. It, it, it would, it would. But if, 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 we're, if we're, we're making a, a, if we're pitching, I'd be like, no, I'd, I'd, I'd rather be able to control a base item of my kit to make it useful than punch up this cool talent. That's fair. Yeah, I don't know. I gotta, the more I think about the, the ground thing, it's your fault. You were the one who mentioned it. Now you're walking it I'm back. Just, I'm, I'm like, the more I think about it, the more excited I get. I, I, I agree with me from the past. I still agree with me, and thank <laughs> you for agreeing with me further. But no, I'm, I'm providing some options. I am, I'm in cautious... I'm cautious, I say, and then I introduce an idea about a growing ring. You know, I, I'm aware that the what was previously the Classics team seems to be sharing non-numbers programmers at the moment from the outside looking in. So if I wanted an ability where all regeneration circles, abundances leave life bloom flowers on the ground for people to pick up, I'm aware you're not just changing numbers there. Like you were going beyond and right now we have the version the mismatch bug in the game still uh, have you experienced this I, I, feel, I feel like you're immune to what now logging in and it's telling you your version of the game is wrong i haven't gotten the version i have logged in and ready is just unclickable yeah like i've gotten that multiple times i get the 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 what like 137 megabyte download thing constantly oh yeah every time yeah every, yeah um but no i haven't gotten the version mismatch that's the only one i haven't gotten i i've, I've a lot lately i haven't been able to ready up and just have to like full reboot everything and i need to restart BattleNet to fix the ready button bug hmm. if i log back in and i haven't reset the battle net app still can't ready up and I don't know what the frick the problem is. I wonder if the version mismatch... I was hide. I wonder if the version mismatch is, is mismatch is somehow <laughs> connected to your, your online status. Oh, that'd be interesting. I constantly Success. hide, man, yeah. Huh. That's all I can think of that I do that I don't think you do. Yeah, because I always have to put myself live because I'm team captain and people have to see me. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, yeah, I like hiding. I, I do like hiding. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. I don't think too much about that. There's been bugs in a lot of games. Hearthstone's still having some some bug issues. So they just announced the expansion today too. By the way, uh, I know I don't usually say this, Kyle, but you should go uh, watch the trailer. I think it is uh, an absolute banger. Oh, I did. You know, I the I kinda... song is so good. <laughs> Yeah, it's really, it's really kind of retro wavy, and I dig it. Like, then they have the laser beams and all that. Uh, yeah, I, I've, I've, I've just been worn out of the songs that they've done, so I kind of flipped through it. I wanted to see some of the art, and then I actually turned on the sound. And I was like, oh, I didn't. I'm with you. We're, I'm, we're, I'm absolutely, I'm absolutely with Great. you. I've been a little burnt out on the songs too, because like I feel like it's been a little overdone. And although the last one was pretty good for the, um, for the mini set, they did a very like Disney villain vibe for um, Onyxia. Hmm. And it, it, I think it's one of the better ones they've done. But this new one, oh man, it's, it's just like a legitimately good song. Yeah, it's just groovy. Yeah, uh, like the, like the, um, Mecha Storm thing. Like I just, I just watch that sometimes because it's good. <laughs> you just get yourself hyped up. Yeah, just, just go watch it. Like I'm not like even like I'm not weeping or nostalgic or anything like that. I just think it's rad animation. 
That's awesome. I um, By the way, uh, it is now paused, so no one's going to see it once you're hearing my voice. But if you did see it, I want to know. Um, uh, this is an absolute aside because we're at the end here of our, our meta chat. So um, I am, I'm, for those that don't know, I'm getting a master's at the moment. I'm getting a master's in digital strategy from the University of Florida. And one of the classes I am taking this semester is uh, running Google ad campaigns, like learning how to use Google ads and run successful campaigns. And at the beginning of the semester, I had to declare a business that would be my point of reference for the entire class. So I was like, I'm going to do hot slogs. It's a business I actually have. I have access to. I'll, I'm more invested. I'll be more interested in this class. And so, Kyle, this week's assignment, I had to run a video ad campaign for hot slogs. Okay. And I had to make a video. And I, I, I didn't have a lot of time. So it's a bad video. I'm not proud of it. Uh, but I just, I threw the Into the Nexus intro music in there that Gorath made for us. <laughs> so it is very intense. <laughs> and I want to know if anyone saw it because um, I'm, I'm going to brag a little bit. My, my, my instructor was like, L- you know, let it run for the week, but keep an eye on it. You only, I only want you to sp- like, see if you can spend like $10 on impressions. Like, and once you hit 10, just turn it off. I hit $10 in like 45 minutes. Oh, like nice. it just, that thing, a lo- over 1700 people saw this thing. And I want to know if you, if you saw it, I want to know. And I want, and, and I'm now, I'm just really curious what you watch. Cause I, I ran a, I ran it on YouTube. It was a YouTube display, like video display campaign. And I couldn't believe how fast it just took off. And I had to turn it off. Cause I'm like, no, 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 no. That's too much money. <laughs> I had to just shut that sucker off. And I want to know if anyone listening actually saw it. So uh, write in, let me know. Tweet me at Garrett Art, ITNCast, write in at gmail.com. Let me know. Anyways, yeah. So had to had to turn that sucker off real quick. But are you ready to take an email or two? Yes. Yes, let's, I am. Let's do it. Darkness stopped calling. Does anyone else hear that buzzing? Hold on. Darkness just texted me. Speaking of uh, that email, you can send that e- those emails to itncast at gmail.com, or if you're supporting us over at patreon.com slash itn, please do. Write us on the Patreon Discord. Skip the inbox entirely. If you want to talk to us during the day, just, just add us. It doesn't have to be for the show. There's, there's a lot of channels. Anyway, Dom Scythe wrote in and said, we're coming up on summer again, and even if it is a long shot, if we were to get another Suns Out, Guns Out, Skin Drop event, which heroes would you like to see getting one? And I'm going to give an answer from the Discord because I think it's one of the greatest comments we've ever gotten in there. Uh, Scubbabobs wrote in and uh, replied to Dom Scythe and said, I just want them to update Tychus's Odin to also be wearing a Speedo. And That is nice. I, 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 when I originally read this, I was in tears laughing. I think that's the funniest thing I've ever heard. I think we should uh, infested Tychus in that case should get one where it has a speedo, but there's a zergling hanging onto the back of it. Ow, that would hurt. No, 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 like the like the, the bottle, you know, the bottle, the, the dog, the bottle. Oh, oh, you're thinking like uh, what is that, copper tone? Yeah, copper tone. That's the name of it. Yeah, not, not sponsor, but copper tone. If you'd like to, I do actually need sunscreen regularly because I live in Florida, <laughs> so. Hit me up. Um, yeah. They removed the butt crap on Copper, copper Tone, didn't they? There's no more butt crack? I assume not. I think right? they did. I think they got rid of that. Yeah. I, yeah. I haven't. I'm in the Pacific Northwest, so, you know, the, the sun is fleeting here. <laughs> I do not purchase sunscreen. <laughs> I always thought that was weird, even as a kid. I'm like, why, is, why, are, we, why are we looking at butts on uh, pervasive advertising? It's like it's everywhere. <laughs> Um, well, Kyle, I think that basically this is a Dom Scythe wants to know who our husband o and wife who is in Here's a Storm, because really what he's asking is, who do you want to see in a bathing suit? Well, I do think there was art or man, was it like a spray or something of Johanna as a lifeguard? That's just genius. Oh, and that would I could see Johanna in like the, the Baywatch one piece, like looking exactly. real, like powerful. Oh, and then the shield is a surfboard. It's like exactly. a life rescue surf. Oh, my God. I yep, need to yep, look this red, up. Yep, uh, Johanna exactly. lifeguard. Hot. Can I find this? Can I find this? Uh, I don't think it's what you're talking about. No, I'm. Uh, yeah, I'm not showing that. <laughs> I'm not showing that on stream. Nope. Um, but yeah, that would that would work. That would totally work. Yeah, man, that that'd be spot on. I'd really enjoy that. Um, 
I mean, if we're is that what we're doing? We're just being like, who do oh, we want to see a in a spin spray? Suit? Okay, hold on. Let me see if I can pull this up. I can. It's a spray. There's an actual spray in game. Um, got it right here, and you can see Johanna. Yeah, yeah. And oh yeah, that would work really well. Let's do. Oh my <laughs> god, the kale thos with the eighty sunglasses sunbathing. Mm-hmm. That's a good one. That's a good one. That being said, that's really irresponsible of Kalthos to sunbathe. He is basically translucent. He's going to get skin cancer immediately. There's the gray mane there that's just like in some board shorts. In some board shorts, yeah. Chromie just having a great time making a sandcastle. Do you not use that Malthea one? That Malthea one's one of my favorites. Oh, where he's game. sitting in a, in a black robe under an umbrella. It's yeah, pretty exactly. good. I don't think I have that one, but uh, kudos to him drinking a highball. That's That's how you do it. That's how you do it. Um, yeah. Okay. I, I never saw that Johannes spray. I want that skin now. That'd be wonderful. Hogger just, you know, in a, in a speedo spinning around with a bucket. <laughs> a <little shovel. laughs> yeah, that, that'd be good. That'd be good. Oh, I didn't scroll down. There's, um, Zool sur- uh, swimming surrounded by dead fish. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Red tide I, Zool. Some, uh, there's some good sprays in there for sure. For sure. I mean, White Mane's basically in a swimsuit already. It's just that it has armor attached to it. Mm, that's that's a good point. Yeah, that's a good point. I feel like Malganus is primed for the Speedo treatment. Oh, yeah. Well, that's basically what he got with his Luchador skin. Oh, yeah, I guess so. That's probably what I'm thinking of and didn't realize so Diablo, it. you know, that's in the realm of assets, right? Like, remove the hat. Just keep the Speedo. Keep the golden Speedo. For both of them, remove all the other bits, and you got yourself a summer skin. Yeah. What about Zul'jin, but the Speedo is on his face instead of that mouth cover thing he has? Wait, with his eyes through the leg holes? <laughs> I was thinking the leg holes around his ears and, like, the what is normally um, what some might refer to as a banana hammock is what's covering his mouth. <laughs> I, don't want, I don't want that. <laughs> I don't want that. <laughs> All right, then. I want Rexar. Give me Rexar in a nice, just showing off, you know, everything but the goods. Ooh, Artanis, Speedo action, and then his side blades are two shovels. <laughs> like plastic, like you're making yeah. a sandcastle? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But, you know, all ethereal <laughs> and lasery. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm into that. Lily has a skin where she has a parasol, right? So she could have, mm-hmm. like, have one where she's running around with, like, a beach umbrella. Yeah, that would be that'd be pretty spot on there. Um, God, we do have out of suit Blaze. Could you do like barbecue Blaze? Put a grill on his back. Oh, just make the armor a grill. Yeah, like the there's some burgers flopping around up there. <laughs> that'd be fun. I'd be into that. Yep. Uh, I mean, Illidan is already basically not wearing clothes, so yeah, seems he's, like a he's prime. basically set. He's got those pants on, those silly pants, but... (laughs) Silly pants, Illidan. Illidan seems like he would wear one of those, like, really short swim trunks. Like, they technically have legs, but it's, like, Mm. you know, barely. Like, he's he's all about the thighs. Well, they're massive, you know? (laughs) I assume, under those pants, that they are massive (laughs) and chiseled, and they basically look like Thrall's arms, but, you know, legs. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Some good options there. There is some good stuff there for sure. <laughs> I don't know how we would do Imperius. There's like some challenging ones, right? Like how do you do Imperius? How do you do Mayev? Yeah, I was thinking um It's like trying to put a bathing suit on Iron Man. How do you sort of maintain it? How do you make them even look like themselves at a certain point. Yeah. Uh, I, you know what? At this point, Speedo's for everyone because I want one on, on Deathwing. Just a Deathwing Speedo <laughs> in the back a, there? Just a Deathwing Speedo. Just a little, just nothing else is different about the skin. Speedo. Maybe he's got some sand on his claws. Just looking through all the heroes here. I, I think the biggest puzzle for me would be how do you do Alarak? Because he seems like a party pooper. What does a party pooper at the beach look like? They wear clothes. <laughs> yeah. Do you, 
right? You just show up in, in like really belty goth attire. And <laughs> everyone knows you're not getting out of that with any speed or grace. So you're not even going to bother. Because <laughs> so if I was going to the his... beach and I wanted to make it 100% clear, I was not going to join water activities. I'd dress like that. Mm. I went to the beach a few times, gothed out in high school. I don't know why. I'm trying to remember because I always, I've always, my entire life liked swimming. Well, yeah, yeah. For me, here we're going. Here we're going back, back to like things I don't like. I don't, I don't even know if I really want to talk about it. But you know, sometimes you would be a downer for attention. You know, like you'd show up and like sulk, hoping that people would like. <laughs> feel bad that you weren't joining in the summer fun i only did that at family functions because i uh, as an insufferable team legit teen like legitimately didn't want to be there and then like you hoped your friends would somehow find that enjoyable uh at, i didn't do that around my friends i was always no I, I did i did it to my friends my friends were patient i, I mm. really appreciate my my high school friends they were very patient even um, when I, I was dressing as anti-social as possible i was still very social with my friends yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Stick around after the show because I'll tell the story about the worst sunburn I ever got. I think we've all got one of those. Yeah, it was bad, man. It was bad. I couldn't mm. walk for days. I remember saying to my friends, I'm walking like a Protoss. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't because play StarCraft till college, so I wouldn't have been able to make that reference. I was on my stomach, toes pointed, so, you know, everything solidified in a toes pointed sort of style so i was walking you know oh like a god like a big grasshopper in bug's life that's bad i'm sorry i'm so sorry but not sorry enough to not move on to the next email delon writes in and says got another overpowered or fun topic your rel level four talent that restores mana when an enemy hero cancels one of your channels 10 second cooldown uh like anduin blessed recovery for mana exact numbers not sure but could be cool or add a splash of armor with mana. What do you think? I think that's a cool idea. I like that. You know, if you're getting if you're getting interrupted twenty four seven, feel good to not go oom. You'd feel less draft punished in that case. I think that'd just be some good quality of life right there. I like it. I like it. Don't I don't have strong URL opinions. I don't I don't play the URL. So it's it's basically imagine getting interrupted all the time. And then you have to hearth because you got interrupted all the time. You're out of mana. Like that's just the feel bad mm, that we're describing. Okay. So some feel bad protection. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you already got interrupted the whole time and your, your health is usually okay. Cause all you're receiving is CC, not necessarily damage. It's just that you are. Oom. Um. Makes sense. Makes sense. Does it sound overpowered, though, on paper? Is this the kind of thing we read in a rundown and go, holy crap, that's amazing? Or do we just go, oh, that's nice. That's a nice, that's a nice quality of life. I don't think it sounds overpowered on paper, but I'd be curious for what non urls perceive when they see us jumping in. Do you guys watch our, our mana bars? Like, if I see a Kale Dust without a man, I'm like, keep it going. We're doing it. We're doing it. But, you know, if I see a you're, I don't think I'm really watching. No, no, I'm just trying not to get smacked. Yeah. I'm going to see a URL. Yeah. I, do, I see a URL and I just, it's, it's like suddenly I'm, I'm, I'm in middle school and it's dodgeball. I'm just trying not to get hit in the teeth. I don't think she needs the armor part though. Like, uh, I think that's thematic and, and very fun. I like the idea of URL being more tanky, but once you get into that math of diminishing she, power, she's already it, so hard to kill. Yeah. And plus then, oh, oh, here, okay, I solved the puzzle for me. Uh, I wouldn't ever want armor because when I'm receiving damage to heal myself later, it would decrease the damage I'm receiving. Oh, so you, what you don't want is a perceived limitation. Perhaps, well, mostly I just don't want to, like, be blocking damage that I want to receive because I'm going to heal off of it. I want to take all that damage and not accidentally activate armor. Urel, the masochist. Kind of, right? Yeah, kind of. Mm, a little bit. She, she likes it. She's she's jumping all over. She's ha ha. Like again, great example. Another great example. Happy URL. Here's the storm. The best Warcraft game. <laughs> Where in Warlords of Draenor they turned her into a like a xenophobic borderline uh, Nazi. What happened to her? Did she? She was in Legion for 
a hot second, right? Was she? she like, uh, yeah, she was hollering around there in Argus. But, like, but she speeches. she wanted to like eradicate the orcs after the events of Draenor. But I mean, she did that, you know, but that's fair. But man, I don't oh, know, BFA, B- Urell showed up in BFA. Man, I do not remember that. Oh, she did. Yeah, she was on a she was on an elephant. Apparently, oh, it was the Magar orc allied race scenario. You're right, but it was Magar orc, and that's why I was thinking Wad. Okay, yeah. What was she was she trying to kill him? I think, dude. I don't remember. Do I have? Magor? Oh, oh, right. Yeah, she went all the. the that, that's why priest got weird too, because they took the light and made it like really, like evil. I get the duality. Like sh- light, light can be evil too, and paladins can be evil too. But like she was like really like, we're gonna infuse you with light, whether you like it or not. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah. That that, that was the whole thing. Yeah, she 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 went off the went off the deep end. And, and, and listen, I, you know, sometimes I'm I'm fine with that. Like you can take things in a dark direction. I, I I love dark stuff. It just feels like yeah, I don't know. Not to retread our YouTube video this week that people should totally watch over youtubecom slash TV. I just don't think the WoW lore has really been fun lately. Just been a bit of a downer. Anyway. Thanks for your emails, Dom Scythe and D-Lon. Keep them coming. ITNcast at gmail.com or again, write us in the patron-only Discord. And uh, it's a good time as ever to mention that if you like what we're doing here and you want to support us, check out patreon.com slash ITN. And also a huge thanks to our producers, Sean B., Mike R., and Justin St. Pierre. Thank you so much for your support, you three. Got a, just a couple slots left, so if you want to become one of our last two producers, check out patreon.com slash ITN. You can catch us live Thursdays at 3 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash TV. Follow the show on Twitter at ITNCast. Let you know about any scheduling changes when new episodes come out. Stuff like that. Um, other than that, Kyle, where can folks find you? You can find everything I do over at kyleferguson.com. Links to everything I do. But I am going to point you towards that Grinding Gear YouTube where we are continuing our Final Fantasy coverage. But this week we did a little wow video which uh very proud of performing quite well over there and we're gonna have a live stream later tonight of some final fantasy so if you're hearing this with great speed or perhaps you're in the live chat join us over at youtube.com slash a move tv yeah uh, and that's where i want to point you as well check out youtube.com slash a move tv please go subscribe to that channel kyle and i are doing a lot of final fantasy 14 content over there and if you want to hear our uh, long-form thoughts on the end of Shadowlands and mostly just Arthas, I have a lot of thoughts on Arthas. It is in our latest video that just came out yesterday, and it's our best day one performer. So go give it a watch over at youtube.com slash TV. That's going to do it for this episode. Oh, and I can be found on Twitter at Garrett Art. Go, go check that out, too. That's going to do it. Thanks so much for listening, everybody. Until next week for a brand new episode of Into the Nexus. Good luck and have fun. Take care.